Okay, our goal here today is to uh, see if we can do something about this lettuce getting leggy. Um, there are many reasons that the lettuce get leggy, but uh, one of the things I can control possibly is the temperature of the roots. Right there, the water is 83 degrees, about 20 degrees more than it, the lettuce likes to be. Outside ground temperature, about 115 degrees, so that's about 50 degrees hotter than it's normally used to. There are many causes to leggy lettuce becoming leggy. Uh, some of it being too warm, um, or the roots being too warm, uh, too much uh, nutrient concentration in the solution, too much oxygen, and of course everybody's favorite, uh, not enough light or overcrowding. Uh, I don't think it's a light problem or an overcrowding problem, and I cannot control the temperature outside what I can control though is, well, what I can attempt to control is the root temperature. So we're going to make some recirculating uh, seedling tray bins and see if we can bring temperature down. This bin right here is a mixing tub for cement mixing purchased at Home Depot. First stop, to figure out the height you want to cut the bin at. I just used a block of steel and taped a sharpie to it, drew a line right around. A few ways to cut it. I think I used a circular saw first. That worked really good, but now I'm going to try the, um, the jigsaw. After doing both, I say the circular saw is much easier to cut a nice straight line, but the jigsaw might be safer and easier to cut around the corners. So I'm just going to go and cut it here and we'll get back when we're done. Okay, you end up with two pieces here. I'm going to get rid of the top piece and clean up the bottom piece just a little. Next thing, we need to add some ports. Uh, one for an overflow and the other to move the fluid from this tray to the other tray. So the lower grommet is set up to move uh, the nutrient solution from this tray to the, the next tray. And the higher one is just an overflow in case, uh, I guess it gets clogged, we don't want it overflowing all over the table. So here it is all set up. We got the uh, bucket full of nutrient solution and the uh, nutrient solution being drawn into the first tray. All we got is a PVC tube, a T, and another piece of PVC tube with an air stone and holes. So the nutrient solution is being lifted up in the tube and also being aerated at the same time. It's being dropped off into the first tray, which I made slightly taller in the second tray and gives me some height variation to play with when I put the seedlings in. When it fills up, it should drain into the second tray via gravity. And in the back of the second tray, we have the return to the bucket. So we're going to let this fill up here. There we go. Looks like we're nice and full. We're getting good flow from the bucket. Nice agitated, aerated uh, nutrient solution coming into the tray. Hopefully, it'll be a little cooler. We want to try and get below 80 degrees. That's probably not possible, but uh, I'm sure the plants will appreciate one or two degrees. Okay, we're all full now. We got all my seedlings back in here.
So there we go. The second tray is uh, draining into the first tray. And the uh, first tray is returning back to the bucket. So everything seems to be working fine. You can uh, adjust the height by pushing the tube in and out of how deep you want the uh, solution to be. And it appears that we are a little bit low. We're at 78.6 degrees now in tray one. However, a um, couple hours under this uh, metal halide lamp and it'll be back up to about 81, 82 degrees. So we brought it down a little I think if I go with a deeper reservoir and higher volume, I should be able to drop it a little bit. I need to go back to the hardware store for that. Though. Anyway, this is uh, how we uh, get our little seedlings over. These are a little tiny, but I'm trying to experiment uh, in a way to not transplant them, or at least transplant them the least amount as possible. This is simple. Uh, Filter media you can get at any aquarium uh, store. I think they have about three or four different, uh, I guess, coarseness. I think they uh, they measure it in space per inch. This black one is one of the finer ones. And I think they have a green, and a white, and possibly a blue. So all I do is cut it up. Now, this is actually an open cell filter. You just cut it up into pieces that will fit right into the 2 inch net pot. Right after we cut those, we want to cut a slit down the middle or anywhere you want, just so you can uh, put your seeding in there. Go ahead and get all these cut up for now. take our seedlings from these Jiffy pellets. I've been experimenting and the Jiffy pellets work pretty good. Uh, the cocoa works a little better but I still got a lot of these leftover Jiffy pellets so I'm going to use them all up. The Rockwell kind of works however I think the Rockwell leaves it uh, it's just absorbs too much water slows the uh, growth down a little bit. So I stick with either the Jiffy pellets for now and after I run out I'm going to go all to the cocoa. Germany is very well with the cocoa. Well, cocoa perlite mixture. So once we get them out we want to rinse off the little seed and get all that uh, peat off of them. If you leave a clump of peat on the roots and put them into this foam here what happens is the foam, the peats absorbs a lot of water and holds that water and you have a high chance of that, that root or stem rotting wherever the clump of peat could be. So you want to take them, dunk them in a little bit of water, clean them all off and get them into the little foam cube. I'll finish up the rest of these and we'll move them on. Okay, once they're all in these little foam cubes, you just plop them right down into your nutrient solution. They float right on top. If you've uh, adjusted the height as you put them into the cubes, the roots should be right in the solution and the stems should be nice and dry. That way uh, they won't rot. If you get the stem too low, then you run into a problem. If it's too high, I haven't found it to be a problem yet, but uh, uh, these work so I'm not going to mess with it. Here they are, I got them all transferred over and uh, they're just floating right on top. You can adjust the height, if you push them down a little bit, you can get a little lower. Uh, yeah, Those tiny little ones, they probably won't make it. The light's too bright, they're going to dry out in a few hours, but these are the ones I normally weed out. But uh, since I had the space, we, we gave them a chance for life. Next step is to decide whether it's going to be a 2 inch or a 3 inch. Because that's what my, set, my system is set up for. 
if you already put them in two inch cups and you found you need to get them into three inch cups then these little donuts work really good you just press the two inch cup and it's donut into the three inch cup and it's perfectly fine you can move them over to your hydroponic setup right after that so these little black foam blocks with our seedlings they go right into the uh, net pot and then right into the blue donuts those blue donuts there they're just that uh, swimming noodle you buy it Walmart or Lowe's or wherever they sell toys and uh, you just cut a yeah, cut two inch I use a two inch hole saw ran it right down the middle and they're actually three inches in diameter total so the net pot fits right in there oh actually I cut the hole at one and three quarter inches I believe, or just below two inches so that the two inch net pot won't go all the way down unless you, you know, press it down there. So the steps are from the germination tray it goes into the black foam. From the black foam it goes into a two inch net pot and a blue donut or pink donut, yellow donut, whatever noodle you pick up. And then from the uh, the net pot and donut it goes into those styrofoam trays there the idea is to slowly raise the height so it gets ready for the uh, the system outside again you can raise and lower the height you know, just by pressing them down and you, they're open cell uh, filter foam so you press them down they'll absorb some of the water and they'll sink back down and if you need to raise them back up you just shake off the water and Sometimes you gotta actually put them on the side and dry it out a little bit and put it back in there and they should float like you, just like when you started. So this uh, ends another experiment by the garage shop garden. Uh, hopefully I can bring the temperature down a little bit and make it more pleasurable for my lettuce. If not, it's just another experiment.